previous day on Wednesday, uh, also said that, that Colbert is a huge, uh, a huge Lord of the Rings fan and Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so, he, he was, you know, everyone was wondering who the, you know, when he used to get the Daily Show, every once in a while there'd be a lot of references to sort of geek culture, and nobody could really figure it out. Was it, was it Colbert? Who, who, was, who was the geek? Was it Stewart? Um, and uh, it was Colbert. All that stuff came from Colbert, apparently, is my understanding of it. So he is he's a huge fan of what we're doing. Didn't, um, didn't the writer ask you like a fanboy question? And he asked you like, can you give me some insight? Oh, you know, he asked me, he asked me, what's happening? What's, what's, you know, tell me what's how Civil War's going to end. Give me, I mean, he, he just wanted to know everything. So we sat there, we talked about Civil War and and uh, and Cat dying. Oh, damn! Oh. <laughs> 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 you know, ultimately, Cat has to go somewhere after that. <laughs> Yeah, so it was. It was. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really. They. They really made me feel comfortable because uh, I've done tons of media in my time, uh, and and you know I'm accustomed to being on stage. I was a musician before. I was in comics and stuff. So I don't usually get nervous before I do a show. That one I was petrified to do because I was such a huge fan of the show and the whole staff were busy. So thanks for asking. He did say that he was a musician, not a magician. <laughs> 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 Well, you know, that's really a, a question for other people in the company, but I do know that we are looking at all avenues of, uh, of how to get comics, you know, to the masses, whether it be bookstores, comic stores, uh, newsstand, whatever it may be. Uh, quite frankly, I, I do think that, that, that the digital world is the future of comics, whether it be 10 or 20 years from now. Uh, it's also a, a, a way to bring the price of comics down eventually. Okay. And then they'll just start rising again. I do, I do want to take umbrage with, I, I, did, I read your uh, Cup of Joe, and then somebody asked you where you saw comics in 30 years, and you said that there wouldn't be any more paper comics, and, and I'll bet you now, a hundred bucks, that they'll still be on But no, I didn't, I didn't say there would never, there wouldn't be. The, the question was, do you see the paper comics start going away the dinosaur? And I said, yeah, I think it will. I don't, I'm not saying that there won't be hard copy comics. I just don't think that's where the majority of the should be. Hang on a second. If, if something goes the way of a dinosaur, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> So I do think that there'll still be people out there. So someone who, has a dinosaur. Are you guys gonna fight? Do you know something you know? I'm just saying that as long as right, 30 years from now, no paper comics. How much would it make that? A thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, 30 years from now. Here we go. I was just gonna say, as long as there are toilets, there will be paper comics. <laughs> Um, yesterday you announced that Marvel Boy, Grant Morrison's Marvel Boy, was going to appear in, uh, I believe, Young Avengers Runaways. I thought you had stressed before that basically he was an ultimate character. The first no, I, never, ultimate I never came character. out and said that. I said you never know where he is. You know, because, because it was never really stated in the comic exactly when it was happening, where it was happening. So I kind of left that open as a tease for people um, that, you know, it, it could very well be an ultimate book. But they were, really didn't have, you know, really didn't have a place to put it. 
And then when we started thinking about Civil War and we started thinking about Marvel Boy and the fact that, you know, it's definitely a character we want to bring back in one shape or another, uh, we decided just to do the regular universe. So, I'm behind you in the yellow. Yes. Um, Jeff, obviously you have a love of Wolverine since you're now going to be doing two Wolverine books. So yeah, what, I, you know, it happens. <laughs> what, what is it that appeals to you about the character? I, I think it's the, the same thing that appeals to me about Batman, which is that you're talking about, first of all, a guy that doesn't use a lot of words, which I, I have a great joy in. Uh, <laughs> since all I do is talk. Uh, but secondly, there's just something very visceral about it. And when you look at, you know, you know, the first two movies I ever wrote were Teen Wolf and, and Commando. Uh, and you sort of put those together and you get Wolverine. <laughs> uh, and it, it's just, I'm very fascinated by the duality of nature and by the idea that, that man is essentially, you know, repressed into being a civilized being. And that the other side that comes out when the moon is full, come on ladies, you all know this, uh, that, uh, that there's that need to get out and how that is manifested is really interesting to me. So, uh, and that and the fact that, that both men just, you know, they can't get laid for the life. So it's, uh, you know, it's just their love lives are just completely awful. All the women they fall in love with either die or go away or whatever happens to them. So they're carrying that broken heart all that time. Uh, and I just think that makes a really interesting character. It makes it every time they fall in love, all that more dangerous and exciting. <laughs> any, specific, any specific villains we're going to see for the Ultimate Wolverine, or that you can say? It's the man in the hat. <laughs> Come on, stand up, show everybody your hat. How great is that? <laughs> there was a big argument yesterday as to whether or not he was a pirate or a patriot. <laughs> I think in the Ultimate Universe you'd be a pirate. No. <laughs> um, what are we telling you? Villains? Are going to be an ultimate Wolverine? No, not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but we will talk about your hat. Yeah. Um, I have a question on when we were going to see another uh, kind of series of Ultimate Iron Man again. Mm -hmm. And then my other question is how far uh, does Bendis plan on taking Ultimate Spider Man after 104? God, do we hope for it? <laughs> uh, with respect to the latter question, probably a month, probably fry his pudgy little fingers off the book. Uh, and I don't know when that'll be, but he's having a lot of fun. So uh, he'll be sticking with it for quite a while. Now, if he is injured in any way, you just have to go over to Rob Kirkman's house, because he's the one who's responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and with respect to Ultimate Iron Man, uh, Orson Scott Card is doing a sequel. I believe there's three issues in, but Orson wants to finish the entire run, and then Pasquale Ferry uh, is somebody who's been dying to draw this book. So. Hopefully, this well will be ready at that point uh, to, to do the sequel. So, it is being worked out. And, yes, sir. Oh, um, I read somewhere in number 10 story, number 4, I'm going to get to 14. Excuse me. Um, I'm looking um, to do um, the ultimate versions of Silver Surfer and Black. Do you know anything about that? Or am I just. I'm oh, sorry. You're you for Ultimate Galactus? Yes. Well, um, the Ultimate Vision miniseries that's coming out from Mike Carey um, is going to follow directly what happened in the Ultimate Galactus trilogy. Okay. So look there for um, some cosmic stuff, as well as the Ultimate FF uh, that Mike Carey's going to be doing. Um, the question is more like the long-term plans for the Ultimate Universe. So it seems like We're hoping that Ultimate 2 comes out. <laughs> <laughs> No, like it seems like you're cramming like 30 or 40 years worth of stories in the past five years of the Ultimate Universe. Is it going to go the same direction, like side by side with Marvel Universe? Is it going to become original eventually, or what are the long term goals? I think I think it's a little mixture of both. I mean, you know, when, when Bendis uses something like Clone Saga, um, it, it's really more of a marketing tool than an actual story tool. It's not like he's going to tell the exact same story that happened in the Ultimate Saga. And then again, you know, but, but, but he is doing something with clones. So we just figured, you know, if you say Clone Saga, you know, you get an immediate response from the audience one way or another. So we're using it as a, as a positive selling tool for, the, for this particular art. 
Uh, and then there are sort of milestone marble events that I think people just remember so fondly that they'd like to see what, you know, what the ultimate take on those things are. But there are also, you know, original stories happening. If you're reading Robert Kirkman's Ultimate X-Men, this 